I want to warn you that these would be some disturbing images, but they're already here. Uh, I just want to tell you uh, before we start that this is going to be a story about love. So meet Katie. At this photo, she is seven years old and weighs seven pounds or three kilograms. That's right, she's seven years old. Katie, diagnosed with Down syndrome, was not expected to live. She has spent her whole life in a Bulgarian institution for children with intellectual disabilities, lying in a crib on the top floor in the sector the staff refers to as malformations. There, you can sense no hope in the air, just stench of urine and feces. This is Katie at age nine. At nine, Katie couldn't talk, walk, or stand. <coughs> These are images of a girl left to die. I have spent years investigating and trying to expose the inhumane conditions in institutions for children and adults with intellectual disabilities in several countries. And this is what I've learned. It's all about love. The total number of children with intellectual disabilities in institutions in the world is unknown due to lack of reliable and comparable data. According to one report done by UNICEF in 2005, only in Eastern Europe and the countries from the former Soviet Union, there were more than 300,000 children with intellectual disabilities living in residential institutions. 300,000 only in this part of the world. Just take a moment to think about this. And Katie is not the exception, she is rather the rule. What we see today, even in developed countries, is that institutions continue to maintain a practice of malnourishment, of violence, of neglect. Children are often wrongly labeled as non-recoverable. They often never leave their beds. They're not subject to any rehabilitation. The Katie's of this world, often, often hundreds of them stuck in one institution, are not being treated by the insufficient undereducated staff. They're simply being stored, and many of them die from malnutrition, from neglect. Many children die because there is lack of care. And authorities will tell you that they are dying because of their disabilities, which is not true. And here's why. Meet Katie. Yes, this is the same girl, just a year and a half after the photos you've just seen. What happened? Something that rarely happens for these children. Katie was taken out of the institution. Her caretakers would say that it was because of her disabilities that Katie just couldn't grow. However, after a year and a half at home, due to adequate care from her U.S. adoptive family, Katie's weight more than tripled. Most of her health problems were caused by starvation and neglect. And she was saved by love. Emotionally, Katie was very damaged from being left alone in a crib from the time she was born until she was nearly 10 years old. She could not bear direct eye contact, she could not stand being moved, touched or held, and would begin to moan and bite on her wrists in her distress. This is all very different now. She now loves being loved. Katie went from being irritated at the sight of toys to playing with them. She went from being <coughs> unable to feel love to really experiencing love. She was the, the kid who could not support her own head. And now she can move around with minimal support. It's truly remarkable how quickly human connection can turn these kids around. I want to make it just a brief note. I'm not doing a manifesto about the benefits of international adoption. I'm just trying to show 
what adequate care does, whether it comes from adoptive parents or foster care or devoted caretakers in small group homes. Adequate quality care, it saves lives. And here's some more proof. Meet Lina. At this photo, she's six years old. She had no effect and was the saddest child I've ever seen, according to the words of her adoptive mother. And this is Lina today, just 10 months after the photos you've just seen. This photo was taken one month ago. She has tripled her weight in these 10 months. She's five inches taller. The saddest child is now the most giggly and happy child. Her lack of ability and effect were from lack of stimulation and human contact. She was not able to move. She spent six years lying in, in her crib on her back. And here she is, 10 months later, sitting all by herself and being able to stand with help. And these are Lina's sisters. Abigail from the Philippines, Eliana from Taiwan, and Sasha from Russia. All of which have a similar story. They are all examples of the incredible effect that adequate care and love have on children. They are the living, breathing and laughing proof that we need a global effort to stop the silent genocide of children with intellectual disabilities by closing down institutions and developing alternative types of care in the community. And we need it urgently. You can help improve the lives of these children. Most of all, by trying and starting to focus on their abilities and potential and not on their disabilities. Don't discount the uncounted. Thank you.